Hello and welcome back. Welcome to History 102. From 1500 to roughly 2000, we are going to do more history, more events, more war, more murder, more gender, more art, more culture, more of everything. We start with the New World. We move on to the Turks. Then we're going to be in Europe for a while. And then... The world is our oyster. So, we start with Mesoamerica. The new world, before it's a new world. Our first people that we're going to discuss are the Mayans. Now, I know this is earlier than 1500, but we want to set the, set the scene up for what happens. And so we want to talk about the, the three major civilizations in the new world. Um, and then we'll do what happens, the, the Colombian effect, what happens after Columbus, and then we'll, um, move on from there. So the Mayans, M-A-Y-A-N-S, from 300 to 900 AD, roughly, they lived in southern Mexico, Belize, Guatemala, Honduras, the jungles of the Yucatan Peninsula. What does that mean? It means they're divided. Geography, like mountains for the Greece, Greeks, the jungles for the Mayans meant their cities, their, their civilizations were divided into local, small local kingdoms. The cities had no walls, which would indicate that there's not a lot of inter-Mayan warfare. Because we did walls in History 102, it's the first thing you do to keep people out, especially nomads with horses. We'll talk about that in a second. There aren't any nomads with horses in the, in the New World. But you keep enemies out. So you build walls. If there are no walls, you're not that worried about being invaded and conquered by other peoples. So the jungle must have served as enough of a deterrent. So the cities have no walls. That doesn't mean it's all peace and kumbaya, but we don't have the large-scale conquest. We have no great empires that are being built. There are no domesticated animals, and there's no wheel. Well, there's no wheel because there are no domesticated animals. Now, why are there no domesticated animals? Because the New World, North and South America, broke off 100 million years or more ago. And the large mammals of Eurasia, the horse, the oxen, that humans could domesticate, for work, for labor, don't exist in the new world. So labor is stuck with people, the strength of people's back, and people aren't that strong. Not compared to, say, an ox. There are also no pigs. There's the llama, which makes up for the sheep. I suppose you can you can um, shear it for wool, but for the most part, there's no large domesticated animals you could you no animal no large animals you could turn into domesticated animals for food like the pig. And so, what does this mean? It means one. Farms stay small. People can farm about 10 to 15 acres by themselves. That's enough to more or less feed themselves. But that also means you're not, you're just getting by. You're not able to own and then use 100 acres, 500 acres, make vast plantations.
So you could do it if you had slavery, which meant the conquest of other peoples, but we know that there's no city walls, which means that's not really happening. And so what no domesticated animals mean is that the individual is at a subsistence level for the most part. There's not a lot of extra food for non-farmers. And there's not a lot of trade because there's not a lot of extra. Thus, our no wheel. Our no wheel is because there's no great oxen or horses to carry the cart that the, you would need the wheel for. So your trade is, is either on your back or along rivers. So there's trade. But at the same time, there's not... There's no Silk Road. Let's put it that way. There's no great trade highways uniting everything. There's no Babylon in the Mayan world. One giant cosmopolitan city that dominates all the others based on trade. So, so people lived a local existence, a relatively poor existence, individually anyway, even if the civilization was doing well, the individuals are going to be relatively poor. And they're not, even though there will be roads, they're not overwhelmingly connected to other Mayans, other peoples. So this sounds like bad, but in fact the Mayans are incredibly advanced, even against other people at the same time. They're mathematically advanced. They have zero. When nobody has zero. The Romans don't have it. The Greeks don't have it. The Arabs will eventually get it from India. They have zero as a placeholder. Which means you can now do theoretical math. You can create negatives. You can do algebra. You can do theoretical math with zero. You could do arithmetic with placeholders. You don't have to have letters equal numbers. You could have numbers just be numbers. And all of this was for a religious purpose of astronomy. Much of the way the religion looked at the world looked at the stars. It makes total sense. The stars turn. They turn at a uh, repeatable and observable manner. And so you can calculate them. You can calculate the stars. They'll build pyramids, but unlike the great pyramids of Egypt, these are platforms. These pyramids are meant to be walked up. And if you ever go on a cruise or go down to Belize, you can, you can find, you can take the tours that will take you up, up these, um, Pyramids, whereas the pyramids in Egypt were never meant to walk, be walked up. So these aren't tombs like the ones in, in Egypt. Uh, they have giant pyramids. They're meant to be platforms. There'll be a giant flat part at the top so that you can get above the crowd and the crowd can see what's going on. Again, this is about religion. To be able to do public religious ceremonies. There are roads... These are straight connections through the jungles. I'm going to mispronounce this, but I'm going to try. Um, I got Sakbiob, Sakbiob Roads, S-A-C-B-E-O-B -E Roads. These are straight, and I mean they are straight carved roads through the jungle. So that's very impressive because it means, means they can clear out the stuff between here and there in the jungle. The problem with that is if you don't maintain that, the jungle overwhelms it pretty quickly. But the there are connections between different cities. So why don't the Mayans end up conquering the world? Well, they collapsed. And they collapsed fairly quickly between around 900 and 1000 AD. Why? Well, there's no one really knows, and there's a couple of different arguments, and the arguments that seem to be 
they're the newest, but they're also perhaps the best, is that these large cities, that the cities got large and that they outstripped their resources. And that outstripping their resources is fine as long as you can import resources from other places and nothing bad happens in the climate. And then something bad happened in the climate. Climate change happened. Was it man-made? Was it because they, they cut down a lot of the forest and the jungle? Maybe. But whatever happened led to a food collapse. Whether the temperature changed, whether the rain stopped, whether by cutting down the, the jungle, it denuded the land and made it infertile, there was a food collapse. And whenever there's a food collapse, bad things happen. And so what you ended up with was intra-Mayan war. And then external invasion. People were on the move. So what that tells us is that it's not just the Mayans messed themselves up. Things were going on in, the, in Mexico that made people get on the move. Those people on the move crashed into the Mayans looking for food, and this led to urban collapse. In some ways, it's like the Bronze Age collapse 2,000 years earlier in the Middle East. What this war and invasions did was break up these, these cities. People fled into the jungle. People became smaller and smaller villages. What you ended up with wasn't that the Mayans died out. There's plenty of descendants of the Mayans still there. It's that they ended up in a dark age. And because they lived in the Yucatan Peninsula in the jungles, the jungle reclaimed whole areas that were left fallow. And so you end up with these lost cities that are still, every once in a while, still found. You know, some kid goes walking off in the jungle and boom, finds a city. These are the mythical seven cities of gold. That when the Spanish show up and they start hearing about all oh, these, these cities out in the jungle somewhere, these are the Mayan cities. These are the Mayan lost cities, the seven cities of gold. So we have an impressive civilization where religion is incredibly important. It's the founding uh, center of the civilization and thus the center of the cities, which meant for the most part, the city was a place that brought people in for, for religious ceremonies from the, from the countryside. And the center of the economy is going to be around the religion and the priests, the priestly class. So we have this local, urban civilization that's smart, but is very much on the edge of things. And that when things go wrong around 900 AD, it collapses. And what happens is the people become dispersed, much like at the end of the Roman Empire where all of these cities that had a million or so people, it's only dropped to 5,000 people. And well, where did all those people go? They didn't just disappear. They went off into the countryside. They became farmers. They became laborers. They tried to provide for themselves. And so the jungle reclaimed much of this area, and the Mayans just kind of fade away from the memory, or the greatness of the Mayans just kind of fade away. All right. That will bring us to the Incas in our next episode. Incas, I-N-C-A-S, in our next episode. Thank you.